Hey guys, Mr. Mice is here, and today I'm going to talk about graphing derivatives and antiderivatives from their graphs. So we're going to look at, we've been talking recently, the last few videos I've made have been talking about curve sketching and looking at, at actually um, sketching the curves um, using the second derivative and the first derivative to find increasing, uh, inter increasing, decreasing intervals and concavity. So we're going to take some of those same ideas to graph. Um, I have the wrong one there. Sorry about that. To graph uh, derivatives or to graph antiderivatives, and that's basically going backwards. So let's start here with looking at graphing f prime from the graph of f, or you know, if you're graphing f double prime from the graph of f prime. So what you're going to do is you're really going to look at Remember that f prime is the slope of the tangent line of f, right? So the derivative is basically the slopes. So what we're going to do it, it's the slopes of f. So we're going to look at the slopes of f and then use those slopes to graph the points on f prime. What I like to do is start with the min, uh, relative mins and maxes. So if you go to the relative mins and maxes, you'll notice here our slope of the tangent line is zero, right? So if the slope is zero here and the slope is zero here at x equals two and negative two, that means that on the f prime graph, it's gonna cross the x-axis. So basically, like I said here, find slopes and plot them as points. So the slope here is zero, so we're gonna plot that as zero. The slope here, okay, if I drew a little slope line here, a little slope dash, it's like, uh, it's basically one, uh, one to one, right? Like one, uh, up one over one. So um, at x equals zero, I have a negative one slope, goes down. So I'm gonna plot that as a point here. Okay, so what happens? Well, um, this is going to continue to curve, right? It's not straight, so I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go straight, um, but I'm going to curve this, and I'm going to basically kind of curve up until I get to um, until I get to about three and a half. It looks like, and I'm going to stop there. Okay, so I'm going to curve up until I get to about three and a half, and that looks about right. right these ends are not. Differentiable endpoints. That's basically what my f prime graph is going to be. Okay, so again, you need to remember you're taking the slopes and putting them as points. If the slope here was zero, then that goes x equals zero. If the slope here was negative one, that's x equals negative one. Okay, so um, graphing from. Remember that here you're looking at. Look at slopes. So it's a little bit different when we're talking about going from f prime back to f. So if we're looking at the f prime graph and we want to graph the graph of f, we're basically doing what we call an antiderivative. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to make a number line for f prime and we're going to make a number line for f double prime. And remember that f double prime are the slopes of f prime. And f prime, we're going to make a basically a sign chart. So we're going to pick our values in f prime that are the zeros. So we're going to do that first. So we're going to look at the zeros. All right, that's about negative three and a half. Zero and about three and a half. What we're going to do here is we're going to make a sign. So we're basically just going to look at above the x-axis, below the x-axis. Below the x-axis is negative, above is positive. So between zero and negative three halves, I have a positive. Between zero and positive three halves, I have a negative because it's below. Okay, again, we're not looking at slopes, we're looking at the y values. Okay, next we're gonna look now for f prime, we are gonna look at slopes. So for f prime, we're gonna take the relative mins and maxes, if we have any, negative two, positive two, because those are where my f double prime is zero, right? Because that's the slope is zero. So here we're looking at slopes of f prime. All right, so let's look at the slope. We're looking at increasing, oops, 
we're looking at increasing decreasing here so it looks like f prime increases then it decreases then it increases so that's how we have for the slopes so um, now what I'm going to do is in green I'm going to basically tell me what this tells me about F so in green here F this tells me that F is going to increase and then decrease this tells me that F is going to be concave up concave down and concave up which means that these are possible inflection points okay so now I'm going to take this and I'm going to graph it here now I want to make sure I have a point to start with if I don't have a point to start with then really the location of where your graph could be up or down or you know it could be shifted up or down vertically there's a lot of places it could be so um, we want to have a point to start with again if you don't have a point it could be anywhere on there so uh, let's start with the point zero one okay we know that that is going to be our relative max we have an inflection point at negative two um, so let's go ahead and put it right here and then one at positive two now it's going to increase so here it's going to increase then it's going to decrease right it's going to go concave up till I get here concave down concave down again concave up Man, my handwriting is just gorgeous on this thing. <laughs> oh, it looks like a mustache. All right. So this is our graph now of F using our information from F prime. So let's go and do one more and that'll be it for this one. Okay. So let's again, we're going to take a look at F prime. We're going to graph F double prime and we're going to graph F prime. So going down is pretty easy. Um, but let's go ahead and build our tables first before we, we graph anything. So um, in F prime, we have a point here that is not differentiable, right? Um, well, we'll get back to that. Um, we have the zero is the where we're going to start with. So we're going we're gonna to mark negative two. Now on the left side of negative two down here, it's negative. All the values are negative. All the values appear above the x-axis, so these are positive. All right, for F double prime, again, we're looking at the slopes. Now, we have, um, you know, the slope here is positive, 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 and the slope here is positive, positive, positive. So F double prime is always positive, so there are no points of inflection. So this is going to be always concave. Oh, so, oops, oops. Before I get to that, um, F double prime is always positive because the slopes of F prime are always positive. Okay, so notice here that there is a uh, place here where there's a sharp turn. Now that sharp turn at x equals zero is telling me that the, the derivative of F prime is not, okay, that F prime is not differentiable at, at zero, right? Because there's a sharp turn. So if it's not differentiable at zero, then that means F double prime at some place on this X equals zero is gonna have some sort of uh, discontinuity. So here's what I do. Uh, again, I'm going F to F prime, okay? And I notice here that my slope is always the same when X is less than zero. What is that slope? It looks like a slope of positive one. So that means the value is always going to be positive one. So that means I'm going to have something that looks like this. If I can draw a straight line, that's the best as I can draw. Okay. So we got a horizontal line at x equal at y at x uh, y equals one, because that's the slope. The slope was one. So I'm going to go to the slope of one here for all x values that are less than zero. Now, what's the slope of this one going at? Well, this one looks like the slope, um, the slope is increasing, so the slope, the slope is positive. Um, it's going to be a break here, so I'm going to go, to, go and put, a, put it right here. And I'm going to go and draw this going up. Right, the slope is changing. It's increasing. It's kind of like a parabola, so the derivative of a parabola is a line. 
So that's f prime. Let's go ahead and graph f. Uh, go ahead and graph f. So if we're going to graph f, we're going to put these underneath here. This is going to decrease and increase, and f here is going to be always concave up. So at negative two, we're going to have some sort of minimum. Um, you know, we don't know where this is. We don't have an initial value, initial point here to deal with. So we could put it anywhere we want. Oh, I'm going to put it right here. It really doesn't matter where you put it. It can shift anywhere on there. And it's going to go increasing this way, come decreasing this way, and be always concave up. So we've probably got something like this. It's going to pa probably pass through somewhere on the x-axis there. It doesn't really matter. Notice here that in the x-axis, though, I don't show any um, non-differentiability or anything uh, because really this doesn't get non-differentiable until f prime. So it's still a smooth curve here. Um, and again, one thing to note that, uh, just note here for this one, um, this graph can be ver moved vertically. Graph um, could be shifted. Vertically anywhere. Right, because we don't we don't know exactly where this point's going to be. Okay, so that's how we graph. Those are some examples of how we graph f prime from f, or graphing the antiderivative, meaning we have f prime and we're going to graph f. All right. Okay, we'll see you next time, folks. Bye bye.